Thank you very much. So uh, my name is Abdul Nashir Mohammed. I'm the regional director for WaterAid in the West Africa region. I'm going to make this presentation about water is uh, programmatic input. I'll be looking at three main elements, uh, really our uh, approach, the role of NGOs and some practical cases uh, drawn on some experiences in Nigeria and Nepal. And looking at the background, these are facts that we already know. And from this uh, meeting, we've already seen some of them being highlighted. Allow me to just emphasize a, a number of them. So cholera is a disease of inequality. But this is further worsened by COVID-19, climate crisis, and widening uh, poverty and uh, inequality. The impacts of cholera, as we already know, further worsen the economic burden of disease and inequality. In the West Africa region in particular, we have seen several uh, outbursts or outbreaks of cholera. In some cases, they are even described as uh, cyclical outbreaks in, in cholera. And the implication is that we would begin, uh, we would try to hold government uh, accountable and support government as, as, a, as a call to action to put in place measures that look beyond emergency to actually looking at long-term wash systems improvement towards cholera uh, prevention. Prevention, as we all know, requires coordination across multiple levels, national, subnational, and in some contexts, even community level, you know, where the different actors come together to work towards ensuring that uh, cholera prevention and control is a responsibility for all those key uh, actors. In terms of approaches, we have developed some critical ways of dealing with uh, WASH and ensuring that WASH is integrated in health and other important development uh, sectors. So for us as an institution, we have already developed an ambitious global strategy that has put at the center the integration of WASH into health programming and other uh, health efforts towards dealing with cholera and other uh, diseases. We work towards ensuring that we strengthen WASH components of national cholera programs through different ways. One of them is uh, advocacy. We engage with policy institutions. We try to contribute programmatically, also technically, in cholera hotspots. I was very excited hearing that uh, WASH assessments need to be done in some of those hotspots, and they need budgets uh, for that to happen consistently. And that is something we fully, fully endorse. For, for us to achieve inclusive, lasting, and universal access to WASH and be able to contribute to long-term cholera uh, control, a number of factors need to be in place. You know, so having an active citizenship, uh, gender and social uh, inclusion, institutional arrangements should be in place and coordination and integration should be central. And then financing, as I mentioned earlier on, financing is so critical. If it's inadequate, a lot of things would give there would be a lot of gaps. So financing should be adequate in, in terms of, you know, increasing uh, cholera or health-related and wash-related financing, as well as ensuring that those funding or finances are targeted at the right thing. That way, we'll be able to integrate wash in health. And then the second segment is around the role of NGOs in cholera control and prevention. So again, three broad areas, accountability, addressing inequality and looking at the issue of investment once again, both more and better use of resources uh, to improve cholera control and prevention. First, NGOs definitely uh, have the responsibility over the years, as we all know, uh, of holding governments accountable, but it's more than just holding governments accountable. It's really about partnering with government, making government a critical partner and working with government to be able to deliver its own mandates in the health sector, in providing quality health care, in dealing with cholera, and so on. So it's really not just putting pressure on government unnecessarily, but holding government and as a partner, providing technical input, and dealing with that challenge together. So critical. So we work with ministers responsible for water, and we make sure that they also work with their counterparts in the health sector, and they work in, in an integrated manner. So important. Data, as we've already heard many times over, is so critical in planning effectively and delivering uh, services that will help deal with uh, the cholera uh, menace. So, so important. The second element around um, 
uh, NGO responsibility is also around ensuring that there's equitable access to not just wash, but sustainable wash for marginalized groups and targeting cholera hotspots. So we make sure that this is something that's guiding our wash programming. So we involve uh, NGOs generally, involved in mass public health information campaigns that are tailored towards meeting the needs of some of the most marginalized groups or those that are most at risk, especially people with disabilities. We try to empower marginalized groups to be able to use their own voices to engage with decision makers. So we have a typical case where women, community women leaders, are engaging with parliamentarians who are normally far removed from them, but to bring them close so they have the power, they have the voice to be able to engage with them. Amazing work by a number of leading women in the communities. And last but not the least, around the role of NGOs, trying as much as possible to drive action around putting in place climate resilient wash and influencing this investment as a critical part of long-term cholera prevention. Again, emphasizing long-term cholera prevention. You know, so let's make sure that first that we're demonstrating the impact of investing in climate resilience and that once that is done and done very well, we'll be able to prevent future outbreaks. So at least, I have them under control rather than have that happening affecting so many people and in a very wide area, then it becomes overwhelming. Again, reaching across multiple sectors, as we've mentioned, or thematic areas could be about vaccines, about wars, disease surveillance, financing, among others. Partnership is so critical, and we need to engage in creative partnerships, you know, bringing some of the non-traditional partners on board to be able to deal with the whole spectrum of cholera uh, response. You know, so around emergency, long-term development, you know, capacity among others. And that leads me to the next one, how we support skilled workforce. These are people who are already sacrificing, sacrificing beyond their limit. How can we strengthen them to make sure that they're able to engage and engage effectively uh, in, in fighting uh, cholera? So again, we have a number of uh, pictures there demonstrating how some leading uh, health workers are supporting uh, this process. I'm going to present two very short case studies to you. The first one is around hygiene behavior change to routine immunization, and that happened in Nepal. The second one is around driving political will to end cholera and prevent COVID spread in Bauchi State in Nigeria. Two practical cases to so again demonstrate that our programming is really driven by context issues and working within existing broad immunization programs or national health programs that are related to dealing with uh, the cholera menace. So for us to be able to achieve you know, successful behavior change, behaviors that occur or happen at scale, a number of factors need to be in place and they are so, so critical. Institutional mechanisms, that will provide steer, provide guide need to be in place. You know, functional coordinating mechanisms need to also be in place and they should be at multiple levels. Financing, again, is so critical. We cannot drive this any further. It is really, really so critical and that sometimes you have the best laid plans, but without the financing, you know, you fall short of what you want, you want to achieve. So it's so critical. And having the right political environment, making sure the right policy is in place, the guidelines that to support health workers are also in place among others. So these four elements need are central to system strengthening and achieving hygiene behavior change at scale. The other, so the example I talked about in terms of Nepal, so you know, the aim was to improve behaviors by strengthening immunization systems and changing policy direction. You know, they use behavior-centered design approach and they're able to reach a large number of people. They deliver this through an, a model. That's something that we feel is something that others could adopt. And it's about providing a business case for integration. You know, until integration happens, we will continue to work in silos. How do we break those silos? So that health sector act holders see what as central. So they plan with WASH in mind. Same as WASH sector stakeholders, they're planning to deliver services with health indicators in mind. So, so important. And lastly, you know, routine immunization, which is something that is now evolving into a large scale uh, program. You know, so we may start small, but there's always the potential of growing that into a large scale program with all the key actors working together. Now moving to the second case study, which is about Nigeria. You know, so this is really about 
engaging uh, government uh, to deal with the issue of, of cholera. The context of Nigeria is already well known. You know, it's a country of global significance. A problem in sanitation, a problem in health affects probably the entire uh, Africa region. You know, so dealing with cholera in Nigeria would already produce significant change in, in the entire uh, sub-region. So something to look at. Bauchi State is one of the states that's been hit with series of cholera outbreaks, you know, considered one of the worst in the region. So it became critical for us to engage uh, political leaders, uh, state leaders, and other health actors. What we did, you know, conducted political and economy analysis, as somebody indicated, you need to have evidence to be able to engage. Review state watch policies, implementation guidelines to make sure that those guidelines were linked to national action plan, something that was driving the entire nation towards dealing with hygiene, sanitation, and so on. So that alignment in policy, in action plan, really, really helped a great deal. Finding people, legislators, you know, members of parliament or state legislators who could act as advocates, working and putting effort towards ensuring that voucher was free of cholera and was, was prioritized in the process. Again, was a big, big, big achievement. And then as uh, already mentioned, budget. Having budget was so critical. And indeed, the state put in place some funding uh, to be able to deal with uh, sanitation. So these are some of the key things that happened uh, in, in Nigeria. The multi-sectoral coordination platform was so crucial as well in bringing different voices to bear on the issues. A number of changes happened. Uh, so we had the, uh, the governor of the committing to end an open defecation in the state. That is uh, a major, major change. To have a governor make that commitment, then it's left with civil society organizations uh, to get the governor to deliver. And then initiate a review of emergency response preparedness, again, uh, working in collaboration with other health actors. And then increasing political will by those legislators to end cholera in the state and improve access to wash. If you do deal with one and leave the other part, again, it's going, we're not going to achieve lasting results. So five things to end. You know, how we ensure that governments uh, sustain wash interventions in communities that lack access to wash. It would imply providing services in schools, in healthcare facilities, in public places, including communities. That I think is non-negotiable. Second is scaling up our behavior change campaigns nationally and embedding hygiene behavior change in all response plans. And again, emphasis on all, because if you focus on wash plans and leave out health response plans, we'll have a problem. Third was around domesticating the National Watch COVID-19 guidelines. Again, we're not done with COVID yet. COVID is still a major challenge and we need to keep changing as uh, this virus is mutating. You know, so we need to work together as a team. And then the last two around uh, budgets for both COVID and cholera and developing an approach that allows us to work together in collaboration. And I must emphasize, governments are so central in this fight and we need to work together. Thank you very much.